and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of understanding that nothing good comes easy. The truth is we live in a society that encourages and celebrates instant gratification. It boils down to this, we want things easy, fast, and with the least amount of effort. But imagine we didn't have to work hard to achieve anything. How would we ever truly appreciate and value anything if we never had to put the effort into working towards getting it? Ultimately, life would be boring and unfulfilling if everything we wanted came to us without working for it. The reality is, the things that are really worth having aren't instant or easy to attain. They will require our time, attention, and effort long-term to achieve. The great thing about this is that once we do work hard to acquire the things we want, we have a different appreciation for it because we feel deserving and grateful for having it because we know the time and effort that went into achieving it. It's only through working hard that we can truly savor the fruits of our labor. As George M. Gilbert quotes, nothing in life that is of a value comes easy. If good things came easy, then the value would be diminished. When we have a vested interest, when we give everything we have, then and only then are those good times valuable. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break. And you said <laughs> this was 10 years in the works, you know, this album. So what kind of inspired the creativity for this album throughout the years? Yeah. Well, you know, I wrote I wrote these songs back when I was in a somewhat of a dysfunctional, unrequited love relationship with somebody that um, lived overseas. And it's it's interesting because like when I listen to the songs now, I I still understand I understand the sentiment because I I know what I felt when I wrote them. But I've grown up a lot since, and obviously now I'm happily married and I have a beautiful son. Wardrobe provided by H and M. Next up on the show, we have American tattoo artist, musician, entrepreneur, and recording artist Kat Von D. Kat, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? Oh my God, so good. Thank you for having me. <laughs> well, thank you for being here. I'm so excited. I've been promoting this all over my Instagram. I'm sure you've seen. Yeah, this is very yes. exciting. <laughs> but oh, yeah, so cool. I want to bring it back to the beginning because you wear so many different hats. Uh, you're a musician, you're a tattoo artist, you're an entrepreneur. Um, but you know, I want to take it back to when you started. I know one of your big breaks was uh, Miami Inc. But yeah. when did you fall in love with, you know, tattoo artistry and that kind of thing? Yeah, well, I mean, I've, I've been, I started tattooing actually when I was 14 years old. And um, I got into my first professional tattoo shop at the age of 16. And I just knew from the first day that I did my first tattoo that this was what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And, um, and yeah, and I think, uh, there was like a lot of learning uh, curves throughout the the career, and um, and it did land me, uh, you know, on 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 shows like Miami Inc. and LA Inc. and um, eventually opening up my own shop. And you know, I still tattoo every day. A lot of people think because I'm doing music now that I've quit tattooing, but I, I'm gonna tattoo until the wheels roll off. <laughs> yeah. What was it about the tattoo industry that you really liked? Um, you know, I, I think. Tattooing is such a beautiful form of self-expression, and mm -hmm. um, you know I have never taken for granted the the honor it is to tattoo somebody. You know that somebody chose you out of everybody on this planet to mark them for the rest of their life, and you know most of the time people are getting tattooed uh, for an important reason. You know that I've never really met anybody who got tattooed because they were bored. Um, they're always kind of uh, you know commemorating an era or um, a loss or, you know, whether it's lyrics to their favorite songs to, um, you know, uh, mourning the loss of a loved one. And I just think that the, that being able to have that special connection, you, do, you just can't find it in any other form of art. Yeah, I agree. It's definitely a great form of expression and it's permanent for the most part. Yeah. So someone that yeah. trusts you doing that, yeah, it, it's definitely an honor. I know that your grandmother, Clara, was a big influence yeah. for you um, for falling in love with the arts. So let's talk about yeah. that. Yeah, so I mean, I, I've, I've been lucky enough to have a lot of talented people within my family. So my, my grandparents on both sides were painters, they were artists. And my, my grandma, she, uh, Clara, 
she was also a pianist, and so she classically trained me to play piano since the age of five. And so I think a lot of people know me for, you know, tattooing, for makeup, all this stuff. But um, what they don't know is that like my first and foremost biggest passion was always music. And uh, I still play the piano almost every single day whenever my son lets me. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, so we were brought up in a household where everybody played at least uh, one to two instruments. And um, we were we were quite poor, so it's not like we had uh, cable TV or like I, I didn't see MTV until I think I was like 17 years old or 18 or something uh, at a friend's house. But so we basically spent a lot of time together. We would play music together and um, have a lot of family time. So, uh, you know, looking back now, I, I'm so grateful for that upbringing. You know, as a child, like, there, I, I definitely wanted, I preferred to go outside and play with my friends and, you know, just hang out. Whereas now, in hindsight, I'm just so grateful that my parents were so disciplinary and made me practice two hours a day because without that, I wouldn't be able to make music the way that I do now. Yeah. Definitely. And we're going to touch base on your music career in just a little yeah. bit. But I, I also want to talk about, you know, Miami Inc. So many people know that show um, yeah. and that's really kind of launched your career. So how was that experience for you? Yeah, you know, it's uh, funny enough. I never really had this desire to be on television. There was nothing like, you know, in my childhood, I was like, I want to be famous or anything like that. I think that um, at that time, uh, there wasn't that many female tattoo artists and uh, when they approached me about joining the cast, uh, I, I was pretty hesitant about it because I was like, oh, I don't, I don't know if I want to be on TV and get all that attention and stuff. But then I also felt a sense of obligation to um, to the craft. You know, I wanted to be a good representation uh, for tattooing. And uh, and so I did it very blindly going into it and it just blew up. You know, I, I didn't expect people to really respond to what we do as tattooers. Um, as much as they did. And so obviously that led to having a spin-off show, LA Inc., which pretty much surpassed Miami Inc. And um, and yeah, and it just from there became huge. Yeah, I feel like that show really like launched your career um, and you were able to do so many things after that. I know you were an entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, you were also yeah. a New York best-selling author, which I'm, I'm yeah. not sure if everyone knows. <laughs> yeah, talk to us about <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, I, wrote, I ended up yeah, I ended up writing three books um, and went on book tours and everything. And basically, uh, they, they were mainly re revolving around the idea of tattoos and the meanings behind it, the stories behind them. And so uh, I love, I don't know, I'm a big fan of documenting everything. And I, I love the idea of being able to chronicle these times in life and uh, and share them with the world. Um, I think it's, it's an exciting thing. And then shortly after that, I got approached by Sephora to um, you know, create a makeup line and then that ended up blowing up out, out of the water. And yeah. and then last year I was able to sell it in order to make time to go on tour. So, um, so I, I don't know, I, I, I look back at my life and I like, I love every single chapter so different. And I've gotten to see a lot of amazing things and meet a lot of amazing people. And it's been really, really amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've had so much success. And as you said, you know, you sold your company uh, to mm -hmm. uh, uh, your beauty brand. But, you know, yeah. uh, but you really were the face of it and you were really the person yeah. that, you know, launched it. Have you been surprised by your success so far? Just in every aspect. Of course. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, I have felt like I felt like an outsider my entire life. You know, even within my own family unit, I really didn't feel like I belonged a lot of times. And so, you know, I'm used to people kind of criticizing or being weirded out by my eccentric weird style and uh and you know to have like people embrace it it's pretty uh, it's pretty mind-blowing you know i still sometimes wonder like wow you guys really like me or you know <laughs> i just can't like wrap my mind around it but i think nowadays like uh, like when i look back and and look at my childhood especially you know i i grew up in a very small town when we moved to america from mexico and um there wasn't a lot of kids that looked like me or liked a lot of the same music and I felt pretty alone at the time there wasn't you know uh, MySpace or <laughs> Facebook or you know Instagram and so now I feel like there's so many more ways to connect with people where you feel less alone and I love that because um, especially when I'm interacting with people on social media it's like um, I can put 
the beginning of a very obscure song, like a lyric, and then someone else will finish it. And I'm like, oh, cool, you know that band too? That's amazing. Yeah. Um, and it's like, there's more There's more of us out there. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. I think that's so great that you embrace your creativity and individuality and you're authentic. And I think that's what's oh, made thanks. you so popular is, you know, when you're oh, thank you. when you're more who you are, I think people, yeah. people respect that and, and they like it. Yeah. It makes you likable. So yeah. I, I definitely can see that. Uh, speaking oh, speaking cool. about lyrics, um, mm -hmm. I know that you are launching your new album, so let's talk about Love Made Me Do It. Yeah, yeah, so um, I'm really ex excited about it. Uh, I actually wrote this album about 10 years ago. Wow. And I, you know, with the intention of releasing it and then, you know, all the things that we talked about earlier, it's like life gets in the way of life and I was filming the show and then going on the book tours and then launching the makeup line and everything just kind of kept interrupting the thing that I wanted to do the most. And so finally, when I sold my makeup line last year, I was like, all right, this is this is the moment to like really focus on uh, releasing this music and then going on tour and playing it live. And my fans have been so patient in the last decade of me making music. And so, um, you know, I'm just so grateful that everybody's so patient because they've been waiting for so long for this music to finally come out. Yeah, and you know, what can fans expect? Because I'm excited for it, yeah. What can fans expect yeah. from your album? <laughs> well, it's funny because when I announced that I was releasing music, I think a lot of people were expecting it to be like metal or, you know, just a very more aggressive sound. And although I love metal and I listen to metal all the time, I I really love like a lot of the post-punk, like synth wave sounds. I love analog synthesizers and, and I love like soulful singing. Um, you know, I'm a huge fan of Depeche Mode and The Cure and Susie and the Banshees and all that stuff, although we don't necessarily sound like them. But um, so, you know, I always like to say that my music is for the hopeless romantics or, you know, hopeful romantics as well. Mm -hmm. And how would you describe your musical style? Um, you know, well, I, I love the nostalgic sounds of the 1980s. So, you know, we use a lot of um, analog synthesizers and but, you know, there's a lot of synth wave out there that's very pop and very um, happy. And my music is definitely not happy music. I think it's more on the melancholy side. But um, but who doesn't love a good, sad love song? Yeah, definitely. And you said this was <laughs> 10 years in the works, you know, this album. So what kind of inspired the creativity for this album throughout the years? Yeah. Well, you know, I wrote I wrote these songs back when I was in a somewhat of a dysfunctional, unrequited love relationship with somebody that um, lived overseas. And it's it's interesting because like when I listen to the songs now, I I still understand I understand the sentiment because I I know what I felt when I wrote them. But I've grown up a lot since and obviously now I'm happily married and I have a beautiful son and I don't really think about that guy anymore. But mm -hmm. I think that like the feelings are still um, you know, they're still valid. And I, I still enjoy singing the song. So um, yeah, you know, uh, it's 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 kind of a trip. I think music is like tattooing in the sense that they're like landmarks in time. You know, when, when you get tattooed, you know, 10 years ago, you're gonna ha have different meanings for your tattoos that you do now. Mm -hmm. So um, same goes for music. Mm -hmm. And what's your favorite song on the album? Um, oh, that's, hard. that's a hard, you know, no one's <laughs> ever asked me that. Um, you know, I have a personal attachment to all of them, um, but I'd have to say that the duet that I did with Peter Murphy, um, although it's more of like an obscure song, um, I was, you know, I've, I've been a huge Bauhaus fan since I was a teenager, and just to be in the same sentence with Peter Murphy, let alone be able to sing a song with him, that was just like, you know, the honor of a lifetime. So I think I, I definitely have some uh, attachment to that song. It's called Protected. Okay, very nice. We're yeah. very excited for that. And you know, our show is about inspiration and you know, inspiring people to live their best lives and show sh uh, showcase um, success stories like yours. So you know, what are some obstacles that you kind of faced along your journey, and how did you get through it? You know, I think that uh, for for me personally speaking, I feel like I can be my own worst enemy. And um, you know, I I just recently celebrated. 14 years of sobriety on wow. ju in July and um, you know when I look back at my life I think that I made things a lot harder for myself when I was um, you know feeding into the addiction and drinking and drugs and I think one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life was to become sober and I think that really um, helped my productivity and also my creativity I feel like 
I was operating on such a low level back then. And, um, you know, it's interesting because I was filming the TV show at the time when I did get sober. And so basically the whole world was able to watch me go through this process. And at first I was scared to share about it, but now I'm, I feel really confident in like opening up and sharing my experience with people because, um, it shows you that if I can do it, you can do it too, you know? And, uh, I have friends, you know, that obviously drink and they can have fun. For me, I sadly, I'm not that kind of person. I am like, you know, all or nothing. So, um, you know, I, it's, it's a balance, I think. And I think, so yeah, as far as challenges go, I think that I could be my own worst enemy at times. I can get in my own way. And sometimes it's important to like self reflect and look at what you can do to improve those aspects of your life that are interrupting what you truly want to do. Mm -hmm. Well, congratulations. That's a major milestone and you know, that's yeah. very inspiring. So congratulations on Thank doing you. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know, for anyone that's kind of going through a difficult time, especially with the pandemic, um, yeah. a lot of people are either sad, you know, they're not seeing their dreams really come to fruition. So yeah. what advice would you have for someone kind of going through a difficult time and trying to get their career or their life to that next level, yeah. but they're not seeing those results? I think I'm in the same boat with a lot of people, you know, because we were supposed to actually go on tour last fall and then obviously everything got shut down and our lives were turned upside down and everything got put to a halt. And, um, you know, I ended up just making a promise to myself to be as productive as possible. And sometimes that's hard when you don't have deadlines and we don't, you don't have like somebody telling you, you know, you need to get this done. And so I, I really just, um, reached out to a lot of my friends you know thankfully my bandmates made themselves available and we we just wrote music and whether it was to release it or not we just wanted to feel a sense of creativity and productivity instead of just um you know being alone in a dark corner so i think these are the times where we we, we really need a band together and um friend and you know really reach out to people yeah Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's been a hard time for a lot of people. Thankfully, things are slowly getting better. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, what's the best advice someone ever gave you? Hmm. Um, well, I think, I don't know if anybody gave me this advice, and I'm terrible at advice, to be <laughs> honest, but I feel like if I were to give anybody advice, it would be, um, you know, really have a clear indication of what, why and what you want to do. Because a lot of times, I think, especially with social media and outside influences, you know, you can lose a sense of integrity and um, sacrifice the quality of your work. You know, if you're going into something thinking like, I want to do this because I want to be famous or I want money or I want somebody to like me, um, you, you know, you're doing things for the wrong reasons. So it's more about like sticking to your guns and realizing why it is that you do what you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that that's great advice. And I also was gonna say that, you know, despite all your success, you've remained humble and stay true to yourself. So how, how have you remained to kind of stay grounded throughout the years and despite all the success yeah. you've had? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I don't have that many friends, but the friends that I do have are real and they're solid and they love me and support me in, in the right ways. And um, I think my parents just brought me up to, uh, to really like know what's important in life. And, um, you know, I, I do believe that, that it's crucial not to listen to the haters. At the same time, I think it's also crucial to not give in to all the compliments and the hype either, because there's some people that really can get lost in believing their own hype and, you know, they become egotistic and self-centered. And so, yeah, I don't know. I think I've just surrounded myself with, you know, good quality people and um you know they help me stay grounded <laughs> yeah yeah I, I think that's so true it's like just to have that small circle of friends who you trust yeah and with social media it's so easy to you know get distracted by all the hype and yeah. all the the praise but you know yeah as as we know like what really matters is you know how you feel about yourself and um, yeah you know being around good people that are honest with you right yeah totally yeah. well cat congratulations on all your yeah. success you're such an inspiration and you're so grounded and it was so nice to speak to you oh thank you <laughs> and you know before we go um where can our viewers or when can our viewers expect your album yeah, so um, Love Made Me Do It releases August 27th, and um, we will be actually starting to tour a little bit in September, 
And hopefully, you know, the minute you guys open up, I can't wait to come up there. Like, I yes. love Canada so much. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, we're representing yeah. Toronto here with the CN Tower in the back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I love thank it. you so much. We'll put all the information about yeah. your album as well. And yeah, thank you again awesome. for being on the show today. And yeah, hope yeah. to have you soon when you're back in Toronto. Of course. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.